In fact, the world has never seen so much warfare, bloodshed, suffering, confusion, inhumanity, etc., as since the coming of Jesus, and very much, if not most, unfortunately, in his name. Now let's think of Muhammad. He was first a spiritual leader, then a political leader, then a military leader. Jesus was only a spiritual leader, never a political leader, never a military leader. Muhammad not only fought in battle, but in one notorious case, beheaded more than 600 Jewish captives. These, these were men who had surrendered, young men who had surrendered. He beheaded them either personally or with help of others, beheaded them. What does Ibn Ishaq say? He mentions the issue about the 600 Jews or the 800 Jews that were killed. Now it's quite interestingly that the number of Jews killed in the particular incident, as is related in the Syrian literature, the biographical literature, is not basically accurately given. Nowhere does the Quran mention that the killing of 700 or 800 Jews took place. Surah 33 mentions the fact some ye slew and some ye took captive and that's it. Those biographers or writers who have engaged in what we would call biographical textual criticism, like Shibli Nomani, like Hussein Haikal, um, like even John Esposito, you know John Esposito from the Georgetown University. What they say, as they basically pointed out, that the number of the Quraiza, the actual tribe of the Quraiza, the village tribe or the individuals that numbered in Medina, basically numbered something about four to five hundred, maybe six hundred, men, women and children. That's the figures they give. Now if that is the case, 400 to 500 were men, women and children. How on earth were 800 suddenly cut their throats? How were they killed? Where did they come? Did they come on into parachutes in Medina? Where did these people come from? Who were the Banu Quraiza? Cyril Glass in his Encyclopedia of Islam points out that they were a Jewish tribe that apparently, according to the Syrian literature, betrayed the Muslims during the Battle of the Trench, as he mentioned. They had attacked the encampment of women and had engaged in treason. And what basically happened is that they had allied with the Quraysh, the Meccan Qurayshi forces that had basically surrounded the city and engaged in a siege. What eventually happened, because they were committing treason, they stated that we want someone of the chief of the Aus tribe to be appointed as someone to pass a decision. His name was Saad ibn Mu'ad. Why didn't you mention that, Jay? And what Saad ibn Mu'ad did was he passed a rigorous judgment in accordance with what? In accordance with the Quran, the Hadith? It was in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 12. What Deuteronomy 20 verse 12 says that if they refuse to make peace and engage in battle, lay siege with it, when the Lord your God delivers it into your hands, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women, the children, the livestock and everything else in the city, you may take these as captive for yourself and you may use it as your Lord God gives you your enemies. So Saad ibn Mu'ad applied the Jewish law to the Jewish tribes in accordance with the book of Deuteronomy, but not as strictly as a case warranted. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, a few verses, Verses before that, it speaks about people who are engaging in warfare, people from distant cities. You are to kill them all, men, women, and children. Here you have a case where people are within your proximity. They basically deserve total death, but he had judged them in accordance with the laws governing people living away in faraway cities. So the Christian bigots and other critics did not relay the information that it was not Muhammad that had anything to do with the judgment. No, Jesus, but Jesus said just the opposite. What Deuteronomy 20 verse 12 says that if they refuse to make peace and engage in battle, lay siege with it, when the Lord your God delivers it into your hands, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women, the children, the livestock and everything else in the city, you may take these as captive for yourself. And, and Muhammad was a fighter. Muhammad was a military leader. In the Quran, in the Quran, you have clear statements about killing your enemies, fighting against unbelievers, about smiting them at the neck, crucifying them, uh, chopping off right hand, left foot, or, or the alternate. You have texts like that in the Quran. 
You have nothing like that in the teaching of Jesus. You have nothing like that in the teaching of Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, don't fight for me. So if we were to ask then about God's promise to Abraham, uh, as uh, Dave pointed out, that is mentioned in the Quran as well. God told the people of Israel to go and dwell in the land. But there's nothing in the Quran about telling the people to go in and kill everyone in the land to take it over. Yet, in the Bible, unfortunately, this is how it says. Uh, at, at first, God promises uh, Abraham in Genesis 12 that I'm going to give you all of this land, the land, land of the Hivites and Perizzites and Canaanites and so on. Ten different peoples are mentioned. So you might be thinking, okay, God must have some major evacuation plan for all of these people because he's going to give that land to Abraham and his descendants. What's going to happen to the people? Well, I don't need to cite you the verse because uh, Dave has uh, very easily and, uh, and, and surprisingly uh, written in his book uh, Armageddon that uh, the plan was to destroy and displace those people. You have nothing like that in the teaching of Jesus. To Muslims, Moses in the Quran is a very peaceful prophet. He rescued the people from under the domination of the Pharaoh. It is the people of God being attacked and oppressed by the others. God's prophet comes to rescue them. God's prophet is a peaceful person. He's Moses, respected and beloved by Muslims. Numbers chapter, 20, chapter 31, however, uh, details what happens when Moses led the people on the way. They came upon the Moabites. And uh, they entered into war with them. And Moses gave the people this instruction. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones. That's verse number 17 from Numbers 31. And kill every woman who has known man intimately. But all the girls who have not known man intimately, spare for yourselves. You have nothing like that in the teaching of Jesus.